Great, thank you, Madam Chair and Mr. Washington. Thanks for uh, uh, thanks for being here. Um, I want to ask just a just a, a threshold question here. So this is from the LA Metro Equity Platform. This is a graphic that appears, I believe, on the first page. And I understand this is something the equity platform you supported over and over again in some of your public comments. I, I'm actually just, I'd love for you to explain what this means. Well, thank you uh, for the question, uh, Senator. Um, yes, we uh, advocated and supported uh, equity uh, in a big way uh, at uh, LA Metro and every uh, organization that I have been a part of. I think it's crucial uh, for us uh, to understand uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, and so what you're looking at is, is equity uh, with everyone on a level playing field, if you will. Uh, and uh, that is what we espoused um, at every organization that I've been in, especially uh, LA Metro. And what do what do these boxes represent? I guess I mean they're you know equality here. They have different sized boxes, and then here there are different boxes here. I'm just curious what this is supposed to mean. Yeah, well that is uh, you know opportunity, if you will, opportunity, uh, and how you uh, position uh, people that may be less fortunate uh, for the same opportunities that other people might receive. Okay, uh, I, I, I got to say, Mr. Washington, I, I appreciate the, the attempt at an explanation there, but I, I don't fully understand why equality and equity are different. I would assume that equality of opportunity is something that we all uh, believe in and agree with. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I worry just in some of your public comments and some of the things that you've said, uh, you, you tend to take this, this focus of, of, of explicitly saying that colorblindness, of looking at people without regards to skin color, is somehow in and of itself discriminatory. And I was hoping to, uh, to elucidate that a little bit by, by appeal to this chart and try to understand it a little bit better. But I, I have to be honest, and I'm not trying to be rude, Mr. Washington, I, I just don't fully understand what this is meant to convey and how it might influence some of your policies. Uh, in an effort to, to kind of drill down to that, I just want to ask just a few questions here. Uh, because, you know, the aviation industry is, is maybe <laughs> Uh, the, the, the single industry where aptitude and where safety matter more than almost anything else. I mean, I can't imagine even going under the knife, I'd probably choose having a safe pilot as more important than, than even going under the knife for a surgery. So I, I just want to ask sort of how this, this criticism of colorblindness that you've had in some, some remarks in your career intersect with how you think about the standards for pilots uh, that exist in the aviation industry. So, a few just very direct questions. Do you believe that white, black, and Latino airline pilots should be able to read, speak, and understand English before becoming commercial airline pilots? Yes, I do. Great, thank you. Uh, do you believe white, black, and Latino airline pilots should have to hold a commercial pilot certificate uh, and an instrument rating as they currently have to do? Uh, yes, I do. Great. Uh, do you believe that white, black, and Latino airline pilots should have to have at least 1,500 hours of total flight time in order to receive an airline transport license? Uh, yes, I do. Okay, thank you, Mr. Washington. I, I, I appreciate that, and here, here's the reason why I ask those, those questions, because there is an inconsistency between some of the diversity, equity, and inclusion rhetoric on the one hand, and the fact that we should hold everybody to equal standards no matter what. Uh, I, have, I have three young children, a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and a one-year-old, um, you know, there a couple of their grandparents live in San Diego, California, so they're on a they're on a flight a couple times a year at least. Uh, I'm actually totally supportive of of what you might call a Rooney Rule here. I absolutely believe that if we take you know black citizens or white citizens or anybody who hasn't had the same opportunities as everybody else, it's great to make that extra effort to ensure that they have the opportunity to become commercial airline pilots or federal administrators or whatever the case may be. What, what I worry about is that, that some of our aviation industry, uh, some of the experts and some of the ideas centered around diversity, equity, and inclusion seem to take the idea that we should relax standards in an effort to promote certain groups of certain racial or gender categories. And I, I just think that's a terrible, terrible way to run an airline industry. Uh, I don't really care whether the pilot that I have, uh, what, what their gender is, what their skin color is. I just care about whether they can do the job. And I hope, uh, I hope that you're committed to the same exact attitude because if we don't have safe airline pilots and if we relax the standards in an effort to get pilots of a certain skin color or a certain gender, it's going to be disastrous quite literally. Thank you. Senator Cruz. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Washington, uh, you've emphasized your time as CEO of the Denver Airport, 20 months. Have you ever flown a plane? Thank you for the question, Senator. No, I have never flown a plane. So you weren't a military pilot or a commercial airline pilot? No, Senator. Uh, have you ever worked for an airline? No, Senator. Uh, have you ever worked as an air traffic controller? No, Senator. You ever worked for a company that manufactures airplanes? No, Senator. You ever worked for a company that fixes airplanes? No, Senator. So for 20 months, you've been char in charge of the Denver airport. Uh, you're in charge of the airport's buildings, correct? Uh, I am in charge of everything that goes on at that airport. Okay. Well, I, I'm not sure that's exactly right. You're, you're in charge of parking at the airport. Is that correct? How many yes, parking sir. spaces are there at the Denver airport? Uh, thousands. Okay. You're in charge of all the shops and restaurants in the airport. How, how many restaurants are there in the Denver airport? Uh, we have anywhere from 150 to 200 or so. Um, you're in charge of coffee shops and clothing stores and newsstands. Um, you're not in charge of the pilots, are you? Uh, no, Senator. Uh, you're not in charge of the airplane mechanics, are you? No, Senator. You're not in charge of the air traffic controllers, are you? No, Senator. You know, I look at prior FAA administrators. You and I talked a couple of days ago. I, I respect your military Senator. service. I look at prior FAA administrators. Current acting FAA Administrator Billy Nolan was a commercial airline pilot. He worked at multiple airlines in management roles. He has certificates in aviation safety from three different institutions, from the U.S. Army uh, safe, Safety Center and the U.S. Naval Postgraduate School. That's un under President Biden. Administrator Steve Dixon, under both Biden and Trump, was an Air Force fighter pilot, a commercial airline pilot, an executive at Delta Airlines, 40 years of aviation experience. Acting Administrator Daniel U uh, Elwell, was an Air Force combat pilot, a commercial airline pilot, a senior FAA official, and an aviation industry executive. Administrator Rad Randy Babbitt was a commercial airline pilot for 25 years and served as the president of a labor union for pilots. Those are all people who know something about aviation and safety. As I look at your record, I see a record where you've got experience with buses, you've got experience with trains. Buses and trains are very different from planes. My understanding is this administration previously considered you for the board of Amtrak. That could well have been a position you were qualified for, and you might well have received bipartisan support to serve in that role. You know, a lot of discussion, quite rightly, has focused on the horrific crashes of the 737 MAX that took 346 souls from us. Let me ask you, Mr. Washington, what is an angle of attack sensor? The angle of attack sensor is a sensor that is on the front of the plane that controls um, uh, the tilt and the uh, altitude of the plane. And, and, and how, many of, how many of them are there on a 737 MAX? I believe two. And what systems are there if there are contradictory singles, signals from the angle of attack sensor? What systems are there? Yeah. Uh, I would say the MCAS system, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Um, the MCAS system is responsible for the crashes at issue. What happens when you get a different reading from two different sensors? Uh, can you repeat that question, Senator? What happens when mm -hmm. you get a different reading from two different angle of attack sensors? Well, I think human uh, reaction needs to take over if that occurs. So why did that not happen on the Lion Air and Ethiopian Air flights? Well, Senator, I'm not a pilot. I don't know if I can answer that particular question. Um, but... Uh, it, Mr. Washington, I, I believe you. Huh? But at the end of the day, that's the fundamental problem. For this administration to nominate someone as FAA administrator, who can't answer the question, why were 346 people killed in horrific crashes that result in the 737 MAX being grounded for a long time, is striking. By the way, Administrator Dixon, after the FAA recertified the 737 MAX, he went and flew it personally. Mm -hmm. Listen, let me be clear, and I, you and I talked about this. 
FAA administrator is a specialized position. I'm not qualified to be FAA administrator. I have no idea how to fly a plane. No one in their right mind would put me in charge of aviation safety because I don't have that experience. I suspect most of the members of this committee are in a similar position. The American people, when they think about aviation safety, when they think about, I played in this committee, a Southwest Airlines and FedEx uh, plane almost colliding in, uh, at Austin's airport. They want an FAA administrator who knows why those planes crash and knows how to fix it to keep them safe. And with all respect, Mr. Washington, it gives no comfort to the flying public that their pilot might be a, a transgendered witch but doesn't actually know how to prevent the plane from crashing into the ground and killing them. I believe your record is woefully lacking. And in fact, you have zero aviation safety experience. And I don't believe you'll have the votes for, for confirmation as you and I visited about